CFR's Canada Downrange. Sport shooting is the most exciting and least covered sport in Canada. Come with us as we travel across our great nation to discover the coolest events, amazing locations, and the most interesting people. Welcome to Canada Downrange. We're here in Chilliwack, British Columbia for the BCRA Precision Rifle Championships. Today on CCFR's Canada Downrange, we head to the General Volks Range in Chilliwack, BC to check out the BCRA Precision Rifle Championships. Then we will get to spend a day with Rod Giltaka of the CCFR as he works behind the counter of International Shooting Supplies in Surrey, BC. Today's a sight-in day, and so what guys are trying to figure out is their elevation at each distance. And so there's a bunch of things pushing bullets around today, but the biggest one's going to be wind. And so the wind's gonna push the bullet, for the most part, left and right. Um, with some difference if the wind's stronger for spindra. I think that anybody that's curious about physics and, and how systems work uh, can transition very easily into something like long-range shooting. This is really a little bit of alchemy, a lot of science, and then some hands-on hands -on technical skills to be able to build bullets and be able to dial properly. Awesome, and you've been doing that a while. I've been shooting ever since I was a kid, but I've been shooting precision long-range stuff for about the last four years. Cool, and you came all the way from Manitoba, correct? Right. I'm having a great time shooting. This is, this is what I'm doing for fun and for my hobby. Um, and so there are some great matches out here in BC. I'm fortunate enough to have friends and family out here, so uh, when I can, I catch matches out here. How would you feel if you could no longer do this legally anymore? You know, it's a, it's a fascinating question. Uh, first, I think it would be an absolute miscarriage of social justice here in Canada. We have shooting as part of our heritage our oldest shooting clubs in Canada, or our oldest sports clubs in Canada are shooting clubs. Um, for me personally, this is a passion of mine, and if I live in a country that takes away my passion, I'm gonna have to consider moving. Uh, I don't ever want to have to do that. I wanna live in a country that honors its traditions, that honors its culture, and don't ever want to see those things ever taken away or ever consider moving. But those are the sorts of things that I think people would have to fairly consider uh, in a country that no longer wants to respect its citizenry, especially those citizens that are amongst the safest, best vetted citizens, like literally on earth. It would, it, it, it would crush me, really. Um, I, I work in, in the uh, gun industry. Um, my hobbies are gun related, uh, shooting related, competition related. I feed my family via hunting, which requires a gun. And uh, if all that was taken away from me, it would be devastating uh, to me and to probably a lot of the guys that you see at the match here. Um, you know, you can have passion for cars, you can have passions for all kinds of things. My passion is shooting and uh, my real passion is the mental game that goes along with shooting. So if you were to take all that away from me, it would, yeah, it would, it would be terrible. I'm not really too sure what I would end up doing. I would be very upset. Um, I actually haven't even put much thought into it because I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine why uh, this type of a sport or hobby uh, would be taken away from people because any of the crimes or any of the stuff that's happening is not happening from this group of people or people that do this in general. It's, it's not the people that do stuff like that you won't see out here. Uh, they don't partake in any of this. So. Uh, like I say, to have this taken away would be a, it'd be a blow to everybody all the way across Canada that, that does stuff like this. You know, that, that's a tough one. This is something I really enjoy. And, you know, if 
the powers that be told me I couldn't do this, like I, I would be very upset. And I, I would do what I could to, to fight the change and, and change it. I mean, no, it's not good, not good at all. You know, and that's what, you know, veterans in World War One and World War Two fought for, was freedom to do things and freedom of association. So what does that tell them, you know, to their legacy? I would be very surprised if the government went that route, but I, I mean, this is what I do. I have a shooting team that I run out of a local range with eight guys, and all we do is compete, and that's our big hobby, and that would basically shut down all my all my hobby, right? I wouldn't have anything to do with it. I'd have to completely change my life. I'd lose tens of thousands of dollars in property, uh, right? Because I wouldn't be able to use any of my competition stuff anymore, and that would be insane. Some trees out there. Right? Yeah, yeah. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca. Okay, your pro tip today is another legal pro tip, and we're gonna talk about authorizations to transport or ATTs as they apply to transporting restricted firearms. So, here's the big disclaimer, and this is serious business. Because the government is constantly tinkering with ATTs, and because ATTs can also be influenced uh, locally by CFOs in each province, I'm giving you kind of an overview of the general understanding, certainly how it is in British Columbia, that's what I can do, because that's where I'm at. And, but it's gonna be your responsibility to make sure that what I'm telling you here is consistent for where you are and the time that you're watching this because by the time you're watching it, ATTs could change again, okay? So this is what it was like once upon a time. Um, if you are watching this and you really need to know the, the, the real information at the time, call the Canadian Firearms Program at 1-800-731-4000 and ask them, okay? so. Having the disclaimers out of the way, the ATTs as they stand today. So this is post Bill C-42, the Common Sense Firearms Licensing Act. And it is pre Bill C-71, should that pass without amendment when it comes to uh, the changes for ATTs. So authorizations to transport is your authorization to move restricted firearms around. Bear in mind and remember that you don't need an ATT for non-restricted firearms. You can take them pretty much wherever you want to as long as you possess them for a lawful purpose. So when it comes to restricteds, I need a separate authorization. Currently the way that it works, it comes with your license. So when you do get a license and you do prove purpose, meaning I'm a target shooter, so I'm a member of a shooting club, I will automa automatically get an authorization to transport my firearms to five places as it stands today. So those five places are number one, to and from an approved shooting range in my region, which is typically in your province. To and from uh, a peace officer to turn the firearm in for destruction or to have it verified. To and from a gun show. To and from a border crossing in your region that does not include what you need in the United States, only just what you need in Canada. And to and from a gunsmith. So that's what we have. Now, when we say to and from, what do we mean by that? I will read it. So one, one more thing I'll mention. What am I reading here? It's that last third of a piece of paper that your PAL comes glued to when your PAL comes, and that's actually your ATT, and you must have this piece of paper. It says on the back of it, special conditions, carry this document with your license card, as you must be able to produce this document on demand if requested by a peace officer or other authority. Um, other authority, who knows who that is, but anyways, also on the front of it, it says special conditions, and this, if you have a restricted PAL, these are all of your ATT, uh, the places that you can go. So, I do want to raise one more point, and this is important. It says here that these license conditions authorize the transport of restricted and or prohibited firearms registered to the license holder within their province of residence by a route that in all circumstances is reasonably direct for the specific indicated purposes. So the ATT allows you to move your firearms to all these places, but in the most in the most reasonably direct route in the circumstances, basically, right? So the, the way that things are worded really are important. Just, you don't wanna to go too far out of the way. If you're going to the range, can you stop on the way to the range and, and gas up your vehicle, or do you have to drive till you're out of gas? No, it's reasonable for you to stop and gas up your vehicle. So 
there are things that you can do, but just make sure that, um, that you are on the most reasonably direct route. It's not reasonable, as per the regulations, to be driving all over the place with your handguns or your AR-15. So, just so you know. So those are the five places your ATT allows you to go. Make sure that you have this piece of paper with you uh, in case it's requested by a peace officer or apparently other authority. Who knows who those people are, as I mentioned. But that's what you gotta have. Photocopies of this document are okay. Um, what I would recommend is you make several copies of these documents Put them in packets so that you always have one available when you're going to transport your restricted firearms. You just grab it. You're on your way. You'll always. I always have two copies of the paperwork just in case I lose one, you know, or forget one. I've always got a backup because, you know, it's a little bit extra administrative hassle in the beginning, but it might make your life a lot easier should you have an accident or what have you, and for some reason you have to produce your paperwork. All right. Hopefully that helps. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. of Canada Downrange, we go along with Rod Giltaka, CEO of the CCFR, as he spends a day behind the counter of international shooting supplies. Rod spent the day on the sales floor and got to witness firsthand the art of selling a gun in Canada. The idea was is to get Rod in the store and get the customers in the store to let them know that Rod was coming in and uh, to get them um, uh, sort of closer to uh, uh, the advocacy groups that are fighting for their rights so that they have a chance to meet Rod and talk to him, but also to get Rod behind the counter and let him see what it's like to sell guns. So, you know, Rod fortunately got to experience the best part of owning a gun shop while he was there. So he got to experience the social aspect, which is something that, that most of us still enjoy in the business, you know. Um, if I'd had to stick Rod in the office for seven days doing what I do behind the scenes, he might have walked out without any hair, but he did pretty good, you know, and I think he could come back and sell guns anytime, anytime he likes. Um, you know, we had a lot of fun that evening. Uh, you probably won't see everything that happened on, on camera, but we did enjoy ourselves. And I think my customers enjoyed being able to come to the counter and, and speak with Rod and, and talk about the future of our sport. So. Okay, so what do you got there? I like this saddle. It's a Mossberg. Are you talking about, are you talking about magazine fed pump action? What is that yeah. magazine? It comes up. For this, that tube doesn't hold any rounds. It's just there to run the slide. It's built specifically for this magazine system. Hmm. When yeah. did this come out? I mean, it's been about six months at least, I think, somewhere in there. So, yeah. It's, yeah. And it's got to take care of this That's awesome. You can throw that right back in there. So 10 rounds in that magazine. Here, I think it's right around 600 bucks. I'll have to look at it. And it comes with one magazine? It comes with one mag. Well, how much of the mags do you You have? don't want to know. Okay. <laughs> is it on special because I'm here? It is, actually. There we go. What's this fun gentleman's price today? Let me have a look at it. 719. We save 80 bucks on that shotgun while Rod is here. Do better than that, can't you? Probably could. I don't know if I want to. <laughs> 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 Go well, for this gentleman. Huh? I, I do six ninety nine on it for you, plus tax. I love it. It is. It's pretty cool. Congratulations on your new shotgun. Cheap price. Saved hundred bucks today. Thank you very much, sir. In Canada, operating a gun store in 2018 is like trying to build a house on shifting sand all the time. So the regulations are changing um, and that's sort of the nature, that's been the nature of owning a gun shop in Canada for a long time, actually it's not just now, but depending on the type of government you have in power, the laws tend to change and you have to try and adapt all the time to uh, accommodate those laws and uh, the regulations are are always being discussed in Parliament, it seems, and even when a law has been written by a current government, um, there's always the risk that there's going to be more written a year later. So you just never know what's coming down the pipe anymore. Uh, it makes it difficult to buy inventory and to manage your inventory and stuff like that. But 
Um, it's a little bit like being in the mining business maybe and dealing with uh, environmental regulations that are changing constantly. This is the, um, uh, yeah, this is the 227. So this is a double stack mag instead of a single. This is both 45. Yep, both 45. This thing is probably the most common 45 that we sell by far. They make a wide variety of 45s. Mm -hmm. So they've got the, the 1911 style, which is single action. The Ruger 1911s, they're comparable in price to the SIGs, okay. and the quality is actually just as good. Why do I hate this trigger, and why is this so short? I don't know why you hate the trigger. It's just the way it's designed. Everybody has their own their own way of making it. It looks like you're going to break it. No, you're not going to break it. What's this one? Okay. The 1911, the nice thing about them is there's a ton of aftermarket parts available for them. If you want to upgrade that trigger to something a little bit more match grade, so this one might be a little bit stubby than your own. Well, this is a main super. Wow. In a business that's this difficult, why is it so worth why is it still worth doing? That's a great question, you know. Um, when we're always looking down the barrel of new regulations, I ask that question myself, and I'm betting that every other owner of a gun shop in the country asks that same question. Um, because it's worthwhile and it's worth fighting for and because um, I love it. Um, I can't imagine doing anything else. I've been doing this for almost 20 years and uh, I shouldn't have to make a change. You know, uh, lawful gun owners in Canada aren't a danger to anybody. And uh, if we capitulate and, uh, and we, we quit fighting back, if people just pack it in, then well, we lose and we lose an important aspect of our culture and I'm not willing to let that happen. Yeah. Those things have a little ball that sticks up. That's what yeah, it's the same on both sides. It's a big hole. Yeah. yeah. I do have a clip. It's like about 30 to 40 dollars. Same thing with the other sling attachment. Well, for one, it's quick detach, and for two. You know, you can you can put that rail anywhere on here, or yeah. the or the rail, the attachment that you have. Yeah. It's like a little cylinder, right? Yeah. A little ball sticking out of it. Comes off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You can get one that's got keys right on. Right. On it. I I went actually just to a, uh, a Magpul multi mission sling, the QD. So it's a. So if you have two. Attachments, you put them on your rifle like that, and I guess a two point, or you take it off. Trends and sales have changed a lot over the last 20 or so years. When I first got into this industry back in uh, the late 90s, the, the trend was a lot more towards the hunting side of things. Um, as time went on, sort of getting into the mid 2000s, um, and more and more people were getting their pals, um, handgun sales and modern sporting rifle sales really started to take off. And uh, we've seen that now increase year after year since the mid-2000s at least. So I would say at this stage now, we're looking at easily a 50-50 split, if not more weighted towards the, the handgun and, and modern sporting rifle thing. So, you know, a lot of the sports have become super popular and have taken over from golf even. You know, we, we call uh, uh, shooting the new golf, that's because three gun and IPSC and IDPA and all these other uh, sports have, have really, really exploded. The clubs are full and that's, it's, it's becoming bigger and bigger as time goes on. Well, I'm going to I'm going to sell you this for 3350. Uh, I'm going to give you 15% off on all your ammo and 20% uh, off with your staff discount just for tonight only because Rod's here on any accessories. CCFR has been a project of I think that's been living in the back of Rod's head for a long time. And uh, it's been a few years since it's been going now. I'm not sure exactly how long. I think we're in around 2 years. But uh, um, I know Rod was, I've known Rod for a while and he's been talking about this idea for quite a, uh, a stretch of time before it actually got off the ground. And the idea was that, you know, uh, firearms owners in Canada had a, a public relations and an image problem and we needed an advocacy group that would address that. And uh, the CCFR has come so far in such a short amount of time um, and, and is so active in improving that image for us that um, all I can tell you is if you're watching this interview right now that um, you know your future depends on these people being able to do their jobs and uh, they're not just advocating for a better public image but they're working behind the scenes 
in Ottawa to make sure that uh, you have a future in this sport. So if you haven't already gotten online and gone to the CCFR's website, you should, and you should join. Because without you, there is no them, and without them, there is no you. And that's how it works, folks. At the end of the day, some great deals were made, and Rod was able to spread his message to many gun enthusiasts in Surrey, BC. To learn all about international shooting supplies and the products they sell, please visit internationalshootingsupplies.com. For more information on the BCRA and the Precision Rifle Championships, please go to bcprecisionrifle.com. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.